Hello, my name is Chris Miller with W2B's TSI division, and today I'll be doing a demo on the new partitioning and desegregation software that was implemented into ULS. Okay, so I'm going to go in and give um, sort of a background of what the system used to look like, um, and then I'm going to get into some of the new functionality of the ULS. So we're going to take a look at the old flow. Um, in ULS, previously before the partitioning and desegregation was implemented, um, you'd be presented with a list of call signs. And this is just a wireframe of uh, the ULS system. So you'd click on the call sign, and then you'd be presented with a question, do you want to partition a license, do you want to desegregate a license, or partition and desegregate? So you'd click one of these buttons and click continue. Next you would click on whether you wanted it to be undefined, defined, um, and you'd select either the entire market or you could select the counties. Click in here, you'd have type, and then you'd have population number, and you could choose whether that was 1990 or 2000. And the same with the desegregation. You'd enter a desegregated spectrum, some upper and lower spectrum here. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the new um, partitioning desegregation software. And let's go ahead and load that up. Now I've gone ahead and, and um, sort of pre processed or, or gone through the start of this application. Um, so we can just go straight to the partitioning and disaggregation screens. Um, so I'm going to click continue here, and it's going to take me to the summary page. And then we're going to go to the partitioning and disaggregation information. So as you can see here, we have the call sign. We have one call sign here, um, very similar to what it used to look like. Um, there's multiple call signs that we all listed here. So we're going to click on the call sign, and this is where the new enhancement or changes come into play. So now as we get into the screen, the very first thing you will see is a map of the license or the map of the authorized area for this license. So over here on the left we have we have the zoom in and zoom out buttons. We have this layer control button here. So as you click on a particular market or a county. Um, you could just change whatever layer you want to look in the background. Um, and then down here we have a street map, which is by default when the map loads, it loads street map. But there's also a satellite view and a terrain view. Over here on this side we have a download file button. I'm going to go over that download file button in a little, uh, a little bit later in the presentation. Down here we have the spectrum bar. And as we mouse over, you'll see the spectrum bar change down at the bottom. So right here, and as you mouse over the spectrum bar, you see the amount. So 1870 to 1885, and then also the upper two, 1950 to 1965. Um, and if there's multiple channels, you'd see these all listed down here at the bottom. And we scroll down here. We have the save partition and disaggregations. Um, and there's no partition or disaggregation added. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the Add button. Now you can see here we have the new partition and disaggregation. Um, we have the select entire area for partitioning. Um, we have a select area button, upload file button, and enter coordinates button. Now um, in the previous screen it was a couple steps to go from one to the next. Um, here we've consolidated all of these various screens into a single screen where you could disaggregate or partition only or partition and disaggregate um, and upload the undefined area or shape files all in the same screen. So first thing we could do here is um, if I want to do a disaggregation for example and I want to disaggregate the entire area. So I select the entire area and over here um, you can enter in the frequency range right here. So 
we're going to do 1870 to 1871. Okay, and here we can continue adding more spectrum, and then we have the add spectrum range, which adds another line. So if I want to do four or five or six or however many, um, I could just click this button each time. So we'll, let's go ahead and save this transaction. Now in the background, um, there are several processes going on. It's doing sort of real-time checks or validation on the license to make sure that one, um, for this particular transaction, uh, does the licensee own the 1870-1871? And if so, um, it will validate it and come back and let me know, yes, this is good, or no, it's no good. All right. So now we have our first transaction, which describes the type, which is disaggregation. Uh, what is the, the geography, which is the entire area, the spectrum I entered in, 1870-1871, the status of this transaction, which is valid. We have a view button, a delete button, and a download file button. The download file button here gives you a shapefile, geojson, or a KML for this one transaction. Okay. If we click on the view button, we'll see that the map has changed. We now have this blue color over here. And you also notice down here at the bottom, the spectrum bar has 1870 to 1871. Let's go ahead and add another transaction. This time, I'm going to partition and disaggregate. So we have the select area button. I click on this button. It's doing a retrieval of the markets and or counties that are associated with this particular license. So here I can select the entire market, the check mark. I can also click on the uh, market and choose a single county or multiple counties. Here I can enter in the spectrum range. So I've already given away 1870 to 1871. So let's do 1872 to 1873. Add one more here. Click on save. Scroll down. We see now that we have a partition, partition and disaggregation. Now we have this instead of entire market area, we have this view market area. This little plus sign next to it. So if we click on the plus sign, it's going to retrieve both the markets I selected and the counties. So we have these three full counties and a couple BTAs included. Again, we have the spectrum range. It's valid. Click on the View button. Now we can see on the map, there's our range, and here's the various areas that I've selected, both on the county and um, BTA. I'm going to add another one. This time, I'm going to choose the Upload File button. For the Upload File button, you have a choice of and this is one of the enhancements, is uploading GIS map files. So here you can select a shapefile, GeoJSON, KML, or the coordinate CSV. Um, now, when we redesigned this interface, um, we kept all the existing functionality. Um, so the coordinate CSV can still be uploaded today. But one of the biggest differences is that instead of a limit of 300 coordinate points, to define an area, you can now upload thousands of latitude and longitude points or a coordinate CSV that contains 1,000 points to define an undefined area. Um, so you can get very detailed, uh, especially when you're going along a county boundary um, that, that might be following a river. Um, you can add thousands upon thousands of corner points to define that area. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a coordinate CSV file.
and I'll go ahead and do the entire spectrum. I'll click on save. Okay, now this is where I was talking about the real time uh, validation going on in the background. So you can see we, we got an error message at the top of the screen that the geometry is valid, but the spectrum block overlaps another spectrum block on the same application. So here we can see I've already given away part of the spectrum in this transaction here. So I try to do it again here with this uh, transaction. And now we have a invalid status. We click on the view, and there's the area I was trying to, to give away in an undefined area. Um, but I couldn't do the entire spectrum because it overlaps with something I've already done here, and also in this one too, probably. So I can delete the transaction. And in fact, we're going to go ahead and delete both those previous transactions. So you notice now that we still have an invalid here as a status. So even though we've removed those other two um, transactions, the system doesn't automatically sort of revalidate what you've done before or what you've uploaded. So what we're going to have to do is delete this transaction here. And we'll go ahead and upload it again. And we'll do the entire, we'll do the entire range again. Okay, so no error message. Scroll down and partition. Again, we have the view market area. Now I can click on the plus sign. You see a difference now. So now we have county, partial counties listed here. So we click on view. There's our area. Go ahead and add the county layer. And you see where that partial comes in. Where we've got a piece here, a piece here, and a piece up top. All right, so let's go and add another transaction. We'll upload, browse. And we'll do 1870 to 1871. Now we get an error message that, that the geometry is invalid. And they could not generate a polygon with coordinates. There are times where it can generate it and other times it can't. So let's see if anything got generated. Okay, so you can see what's happened here is that I've, this is what I intended to upload. However, when I, created the coordinate CSV or the pipe delimited file, I put one of the corner points out of order. So it created sort of this bow tie effect where it didn't really know how to connect the lines in the right order. So it created this bow tie right here in the middle. And so it cannot, the system doesn't allow things to self intersect. So we're going to delete this one. Alright, I'm going to do another upload. Okay, this time I'm going to go ahead and upload a shapefile. Now you see uh, with the shapefile there are several different extensions that are included in the shapefile. The DBF, Projection, SBN, SBX, SHP, and SHX. 
Now these files have to be zipped together as a package. Um, so you cannot upload an individual shape or individual DBF file. Uh, those files need to be zipped first prior to uploading. So let's go and upload this one right here. Okay, so we get an error message that the geometry is invalid. So I scroll down, and again, this is where the read time processing comes into play. So we can see here's our the geometry we try to upload. Um, and as we zoom in, we kind of see it's trying to follow the boundary. Then this is where it's crossed over into the adjacent market. So this is where that validation comes into play, and it's and because this is now crossed over the boundary, it's considered an invalid um, geometry. So we have to do it again. Click on Add again. Upload file. This time, let's go ahead and upload a, another pipe limited file. So here is a pipe limited file, and we have 728 coordinate points. So let's open this one. Valid. View the market area, hit on the plus sign. View a partial of the county, click on view. And here you can see again, now we, we've followed that market boundary all the way up and given it sort of this partial county here, right here. So that was with 760 plus coordinates. All right, we're going to add another transaction. All right, we'll do this one here. The other advantage of uploading a GIS map file, and, and in this case you will see once the screen comes up, um, is that you could have multiple undefined areas um, in a single file. Uh, when you're uploading a pipe delimited file, uh, you'd have to upload each one individually to define that area. So here are the three separate pieces I've uploaded um, in a single shape file. Uh, if you do the pipe limited, you'd have to do one here, one here, and a third there. I'll show you what happens when you try to upload uh, a multi-part file. Let's see if I've got a sample here. No, I don't have a sample here, but a multi oh here it is let's try the multi poly the entire spectrum okay so here we have the error message if we scroll down and click on the view 
So here I was trying to do two separate pieces in a single file. And so as it goes around, it connects and then it then goes down to the next piece and then connects those dots together. So this isn't allowed here. Go ahead and delete that one. I'm going to upload another shape file. Okay, so here I've now overlapping the spectrum in the same application. So, and this is just another example of a, a multi-part polygon in a single file. Uh, if I picked a different spectrum amount, then it would have been valid. And last but not least, we still have the in recordance button. Um, again, latitude and longitude, you could manually enter these in. Um, and then the add coordinates button, you just add another line um, until you need it, whatever it's 100 or 50 or 10, whatever how many you need to add in there. Okay. And I think that does it for the upload portion. Uh, I sh well, what I want to show now is you notice back on this screen here um, that there's nowhere to enter in any sort of population data. As you saw on the old screens, you'd enter in the population data um, from 1990 or 2010, uh, whatever it may be. Um, instead, now population is being calculated overnight or as this application is processing. So I want to show the uh, resulting application. So when the new partitioning and segregation software was launched, um, it also changed the application portion of the ULS search. So now we have this new map uh, column here. So we click on the view map. All right, so now this is previously loaded one. We can see some um, transactions here. And then we have what it is. And again, we have the view market area button. We'll click on the plus sign there. And this is where the population numbers will now be displayed. So uh, for each one here, we have the population number. Um, we'll take a look at this one. And we have four population numbers, and here's a zero. Now, how population is being calculated is by the 2010 census block centroid. And what that means is that if the center of the census block population falls within this area, then that, that population is calculated. So if we click on this one where we have that zero, if we click on view on map, um, we're able to see why that one county had a zero. So we're going to go ahead and add counties. If we go down here for Washington County, there's that little piece that crosses into Washington County. So what that means is that the block pop centroid did not fall within this area right here. So thus, the calculation is zero. And again, we have the download file button here. Again, your the shape file with this particular transaction.
So I'm going to get it get out of this application here. Go ahead and log out. And I'm going to go over the download file button as a for another example. And again, this application has been preloaded, uh, skipping all the questions at, at the beginning. Now, there is one thing you will notice here is that there is now a check mark next to the call sign, um, and that check mark means that I've I've either completed the the transaction or the partitioning and disaggregation, um, and I could continue. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what I've already done on this application. If there is no transaction here, there would be no check mark on that previous screen. So here we have a license that's already been partitioned, and so it has pieces. Uh, sort of spread out throughout the market. Um, I'm going to add the county layers. If you zoom in here, you see it was partial county here and a, and a partial county here. Um, and you could do the do this both with a full license that has never been partitioned or partial licenses. So here, here we have the download shapefile button, and um, we recommend that you use. Either you could download it here within the transaction module, or this file is also available through license search. Um, so you could download this either as a shapefile, GeoJSON, or KML file. Um, and now you've, you're going to have a copy of this license right here. You could then use some GIS software um, to then cut this um, county in half again. So, for example, if I wanted to um, assign the top portion of this half county to somebody else. Um, I could just download that file, download the shape file here, go ahead and cut this piece in half, then I can upload this piece again, and um, it will be valid because it's, it's right here. And again, both for full and partials, you could do the same thing. So that ends my presentation for the partitioning and disaggregation enhancements. Again, my name is Chris Miller, and you can reach me at chris.miller at fcc.gov. You can also, if you have any uh, questions, call the FCC's helpline or help desk, and they will be able to assist you too. Thank you very much.